once again thank you so much for clicking on this video this video is one of unusual ones it's a news about fraud forecasting it's about the weather it's about artificial intelligence so um i must admit that since i started working on these videos there was two buildings concerning the weather that they have built one they have renovated to focus how the weather is going to be one to help the farmers to the military and security wise so this news is all about that what they have done the students and also the masters themselves what they have done concerning that they are asking help from the government because right now they know what they are doing they just need the government to help with the equipment i said what congratulations to them please listen and i'll be back thank you for your time health when it becomes a father figure it has the motivation as i have observed and as we all have actually, is the recurring sudden and especially devastating floods that our country has suffered over the past decades. Within the confines of our well-equipped laboratory, we meticulously asked ourselves a profound question. With all the extensive knowledge and everything we currently know and understand, what significant contributions can we truly make to effectively help address this pervasive and devastating scourge? It is precisely within this critical context that we earnestly desired to develop this comprehensive flood forecasting application specifically for the city of Ouagadougou in order to provide substantial relief to the local population, to actively help prevent the tragic loss of precious life and valuable property, and to diligently protect their essential livelihoods. It is still very much a work in progress, in the sense that we currently have a major and pressing concern within our dedicated laboratory. We unfortunately lack sufficient and consistent funding. So, resources need to be provided in order to acquire a certain amount of equipment. That is why we are truly counting on the goodwill of the highest authorities to support the laboratory, so that we can obtain this equipment to improve our tool. It is truly a tool designed to be scalable. The laboratory works on several different topics. Today it was about flood-related issues, but also with the technologies we handle, we are developing several other tools that can truly help the country solve a number of problems, whether they are security issues or in other fields. As for the specifics of the application, it must be said that it is truly an application that fits well with local realities. Because it is truly specific data from the city of Ouagadougou that was collected to uh, develop the solution. And this includes meteorological data, hydrological data, as well as geological data. These are data unique to the city of Ouagadougou in order to have a tool that truly fits our realities. Regarding the specific mechanism that is being utilized, it should be carefully noted that it is indeed a sophisticated machine learning technology that is being employed. This particular machine learning system, which is quite advanced, meticulously uses comprehensive meteorological, detailed hydrological and precise geographical data specifically gathered from the vibrant city of Ouagadougou. It is this data that is analyzed in order to train a model. It is this particular model that is precisely used to make the crucial prediction. This significant project was carefully carried out under the expert guidance of two truly renowned scientists who are indeed leading experts in their specialized field. They are Dr. Ferdinand Ginko, who is an esteemed associate professor at the prestigious Joseph Kizerbo University, particularly at the renowned Burkina Bay Institute of Arts and Crafts. He is a distinguished specialist in everything related to the intricate field of knowledge engineering, sophisticated information systems, and also advanced artificial intelligence. Also, we have Dr. Zephyrin Karambera from the National Institute of Sciences and Societies, which is uh, affiliated with the National Center for Scientific Research, and uh, who is a specialist in everything related to civic systems. So they significantly contributed, and we worked closely 
hand in hand to truly produce this remarkable little innovation that we see today, which is very innovative and will really allow us to address a major issue that our country has been facing in recent decades. It's a project that took five months, a considerable long time. It's really an entire process. Today, we have the significant opportunity to present to the entire population in a comprehensive manner precisely what we are also diligently doing and achieving within our advanced laboratories. As for the vibrant and bustling city of Ouagadougou alone, let's say we can certainly see this particular project as a significant pilot test project, a crucial undertaking. In our plans, it's really to expand it to the entire city of Ouagadougou. It should also be particularly noted that we currently have a certain significant number of operational constraints that truly and genuinely force us to strictly limit ourselves to the bustling city of Ouagadougou for the time being. Uh, but in the coming days, we plan to see to what extent we can take other cities into account. I truly believe that people are really interested. It encourages us even more to truly see that the significant work we are diligently doing is genuinely appreciated by all the relevant stakeholders as well, including the general population, and also the valuable feedback and constructive criticism that have been thoughtfully given. These are important criticisms that we will certainly take into careful consideration, always with the primary aim of continually improving and further perfecting our essential tool. It's essentially a comprehensive decision support tool because, as you undoubtedly know, critical issues related to natural disasters are quite sensitive and challenging to effectively manage. And normally, in such cases, there should be a single decision-making center. And that's why this tool should be made available to decision makers once it is fully stabilized. So that on this basis, the person authorized to trigger an alert for a possible flood in a given area can do so. So it is truly intended for decision makers. And so for decision makers, for us in a country, it is first and foremost the government and the government will designate the body responsible for overseeing these matters. Now for the lab, there are already two aspects. The first is that it contributes to the training of our students, whether they are in a master's program, because the last semester of the master's is spent in the laboratories. It involves the development of an application, software or a tool that is presented and defended. And for doctoral students, it is the deepening of this work in order to present a doctoral thesis. So in terms of research and from an academic perspective, this is an important aspect for the lab. The second important aspect for the lab is the matter of visibility, the opportunity to showcase to Burkina Bay and beyond, to the sub-region, the African region and so on, that the laboratory possesses the necessary skills and expertise to address national, sub-regional, regional and international issues. And today, you know that the issue of data is a fundamental one because data is now used to train uh, artificial intelligence systems that are capable of, let's say, preventing situations and making predictions using real-time data, past or historical data, and thus being able to forecast future events. And so, as a result, today the issue of data has become a central one, the quality of the data. Because if you train your artificial intelligence system with poor quality data, you will end up with a poor quality product. But if you train it with very high quality data, you will have a very high quality system. So that's why it's important. And so today the use of data is regulated and supervised, even in our own country. And if our data is given away and shared everywhere like that, unfortunately it will create a problem of sovereignty. Because sovereignty is not just economic, financial or social. It is also scientific and technological. And so for us it's essential that this kind of tool is developed. And so the work was done on the city of Ouagadou but uh, it's a tool that can quickly be deployed across the entire national territory, so it depends on the data. And through this uh, presentation, uh, we had discussions with the National Meteorological Agency, which has also started working on artificial intelligence systems and is ready to support us so that we can deploy this solution across the national territory.
because Anam has at least 200 meteorological stations throughout the country and a little more than 10 in Ouagadou. And so we are very happy about that. And that was also our goal because this is a tool we want to make available to the authorities of our country as a contribution to the development of our nation. And that's what we're here for. And so the National Meteorological Agency is ready to support us. We will take steps with them to see how this can be done. And we also have CELs which has stepped in to say that there is a possibility we could receive support uh, to deploy this solution. So this work will also be carried out. So we are doing this with great joy. And it should be noted that this activity is part of the laboratory's activities for the year 2024, actually 2025. Every year now we develop a program of activities that we validate. So it is planned that at the end of each month we will present a project that has been developed in the laboratory and a project that is geared towards the development of our country. So in the coming months you will also see presentations of solutions in the fields of insurance, health, agriculture and so on. precisely why we decided to organize these days to present our research results so that we can engage both government decision makers and technical and financial partners to support us to deploy our solutions to further develop them and to advance our research activities. You know that in computer science for example most scientific work is published in journals that are generally developed during scientific conferences and in general participation requires a fee and the laboratory does not have the means to cover it. So often it's the head of the laboratory, the research team leader, or the thesis supervisor who ends up paying out of their own pocket. And so that's why we decided, because we can't just stay closed off in our own bubble and hope that support will come to us. We need to generate interest in what we are doing so that we can receive support. And so we are counting uh, precisely on the outstanding work that the press will do during our various feedback days to show the people of Burkina Faso, the Burkina Bay authorities and beyond what the mathematics and computer science laboratory at Jules Verne University is capable of so that we can receive support to provide homegrown solutions to our country's own challenges. Thank you so much families for listening and watching you heard them all congratulations to them um they know what they are saying they know what they are working towards to all they need is help to make it successful because one the security reasons they need it and also for water the fraud that is destroying things and that's why i'm proud of this government already when it came last year he started working on some of them already and I can testify to that and I'm sure very soon they will be opening them for us to see how it's finished or it's almost finished. So yes, the president, definitely this news is very important. He will look into it and it won't be long we'll be seeing them coming out to say that yes, we have received our equipment and now we are training more people to be able to do what we are doing to protect our country and also security-wise, agriculture-wise, and there will be fraud, I cannot say, because that's a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Somebody says it's not natural disaster. The last time I say it, sometimes you can control them, sometimes you can't. We know there are other things that they are doing nowadays artificially to change the weather. Yes, I'm aware of it. But at least they can see some things and help a bit. And that's why I want to add this one to the documentary as well, because it's something that we will look back on it and say that, yes, we have seen the beginning of it, if that makes sense. Thank you so much, families. If you have anything to add, please add to it. If you are scientists, if you know anything about artificial intelligence, please leave comment. Let me learn from you. <laughs> Let me learn from you and let others learn from you as well. Congratulations to them. Very intelligent young men over there. God bless them all for thinking about their country 
and ready to help their country as well. I will leave you here. Credit to Faso Seri, LTB News. Thank you so much, families, for being patient with me. My VIPs, my kings and queens, my returning families, I haven't forgot you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and everything. Your encouragement, your support, liking the videos, sharing them. If you are new here and you have subscribed, thank you. Welcome to the family. Leave comments and let us know you and welcome you properly under the comment section. Stay with us because we are all making history here. We are making documentary. For me, that's all that I'm about. I don't want to be creating any narrative, uh, propaganda and all that. No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm creating, I'm making documentary here together with you, if that makes sense. Thank you. God bless you all. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.